City University Television presents Metro View. Our topic, AIDS activism. Our host, Professor Ed Rogalski, director of the Brooklyn College Graduate Program for Worker Education and city editor for CUNY TV. Welcome to Metro View. It's been just over a decade since AIDS was recognized, named, and labeled as an epidemic. And now, by virtue of the devastation it has caused, it's aptly called a plague. According to the Harvard-based Global AIDS Policy Coalition, it's estimated that 100 million adults and 10 million children will be affected by the end of the decade worldwide. In New York State, the death toll will double by 1997 to over 100,000, with 140,000 estimated to be infected by HIV and 7,000 new infections per year, 80% of those totals here in New York City. And, and here in New York, since 1981, 43,000 people have died. And again, it's estimated that in the next three to five period, as many as 60,000 people will die. December 1 is World AIDS Day, and so it's fitting that we take time to look at this situation, to ask what do we know and where are we going. Our guests are all people who are active in the fight against AIDS, and they are Maxine Wolf from ACT UP New York, the AIDS Coalition to Unleash Power, Linda Meredith, AIDS activist, Rich Jackman from the ACT UP People with AIDS Coalition Housing Committee, and Tamar Sokol from Life Force. Welcome to Metro View. Thanks. Hi. Maxine, I'd like to ask you, in, in your view, what's the single biggest issue now as we are more than a decade into this epidemic? What, uh, what, what's the main point? Well, I mean, on the one hand, I could say to you there's not a single issue. But probably the single issue is that people are still dying and people are still getting infected. Um, worldwide um, and I don't think that any government and especially the government of the United States uh, given its uh, resources has taken it seriously at all mm -hmm. so to me that's the major issue <laughs> Linda <coughs> what do you think is the if, if there was something that needed to be focused on particularly starting tomorrow what would that be if you were making that decision I think if I was making that decision, I would, I would do a two-pronged research effort. First, to find a model so that no one else from this point forward ever has to become infected. And then to break down the way that research is conducted in this country now and essentially start all over again with a real model for AIDS for which we can move towards a cure. Mm -hmm. So that really is the two-pronged research effort that, that I would envision to sort of have an emergency need right now and into the future. Rich, you've been focusing on the housing needs of, of people with AIDS. Where do we stand with that problem in New York City? Well, um, New York City, New York State, and the nation, um, um, the, it's, it's absolutely disastrous. I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, I think few people would argue that amongst the services being provided, housing is there's less housing than any other type of service that and I think that's a simple matter that's simply because of the amount of money and the amount of red tape that has to uh, be gotten through to do housing as opposed to some of the other services. Tomorrow your group Life Force is, is um, women fighting AIDS. Mm -hmm. This is the new frontier in, in the evolution of this disease, mm -hmm. not that we want to talk about disease evolving. What uh, is in the forefront in the issue of, of, of women fighting AIDS these days. Why is that a separate problem, as it were? A separate problem as opposed to men fighting AIDS? or fight, well, do, do we have to fight AIDS among women differently than we've been fighting yes, it among men? I think so, because women, um, they're, the reasons that you, they get infected hetero, heterosexually, say, are, are different. Women have less power. Women don't control the sex act. Women um, have, you know, historically um, been unable to, s to have control over that very act which, by which they get infected mm -hmm. sexually, you know. Um, and just speaking on a level to, to women is different than uh, you would speak to um, 
to men about how to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. So that it needs a, a different kind of orientation, needs, a different focus. Yeah, it needs. I, I feel like it needs women speaking to women about the issues that they that they share, you mm -hmm. know, and and. Uh, that's what Life Force does. They go out into the community, community women, speaking to other community women uh, about uh, protection and, and uh, empowerment, uh, mm -hmm. self-esteem, you know. AIDS, uh, in terms of what we know, is, is at, at, at least a multidimensional problem. It raises lots of different issues. The level at which the government has been funding research efforts, mm -hmm. the kind of uh, prevention that, that we've undertaken the, and the education that needs to proceed or that is a key part of that prevention. Um, the issue of, 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 of the research medically, scientifically, what, what we think are the causes, in which direction is that research going, uh, who controls it, uh, the question of services like housing and other social services for people. Um, as we look at that, that very complex mix of issues. Let's take the, uh, the issue of uh, the, the medical research, the funding for it, and how it's progressed to this point. How would you characterize our effort, or how would you criticize it? And if you were, if you were defining an agenda for the future, what would it be like? Maxine? <laughs> well, I just happen to have it here. It's called H.R. 3310. A bill um, in the U.S. House of Representatives. This is a bill that's just been introduced into the U.S. House of Representatives. Um, to establish um, the Barbara McClintock Project to Cure AIDS, which is a, came out of a working group in ACT UP New York. And actually, we asked ourselves exactly the same question. We sat down and looked at um, all of the documents that had written, been written for uh, President Clinton, uh, transition documents by different AIDS organizations. We, we all of us knew about the research that was going on. And basically, um, came up with, came to the conclusion that doing research business as usual is never going to lead to a cure. That the research program at the National Institute of Health that is about uh, uh, finding the cause of AIDS, the understanding the pathogenesis of it, um, has never been given the kind of support it needs, nor is that going to be done in a situation where the research agenda is determined by its outcome, that is, a drug a profitable drug. And as long as that's the answer, then a whole set of issues will not be dealt with. For example, let me just well, give you an example. Just let me clarify. Yeah. Research driven by the desire to produce a drug which will cure mm -hmm. is right. not the way we should be going about exactly. research. Exactly. Exactly. Let me, let me give you an example. A <coughs> European, there, there are studies going on at the National Institute of Health about giving p women, pregnant women, AZT mm -hmm. to see if it stops transition to a, to a fetus. Okay. There was a European study that showed that with good prenatal care, the rate of transition from a mother to a fetus is 15%. In the United States, it's considered to be 30 to 40%, and then you give a toxic drug like AZT to see if you can get it down to 20%. Nobody is researching whether good prenatal care would prevent transmission. Mm -hmm. So when the outcome is to produce a profitable drug, mm -hmm. you don't look at things like low-cost um, medications that will not make a profit. You don't look at um, general health care level. You don't look at the kinds of services people have, the food they're eating, mm -hmm. a, a whole range of... So that's one thing. The other thing is that we, we not just with women, but you know, from, from women to children, but we, have, we don't really understand transmission. There are whole sets mm -hmm. of unanswered questions about something as basic <coughs> as transmission. Mm -hmm. what, a, what about this McClintock project? First of all, uh, wh why the name Barbara McClintock? What, what, uh, what connection is that? And how would the McClintock project be different if it were undertaken by the federal government? Okay. Uh, Barbara McClintock was a research geneticist to eventually, towards the end of her career, um, was finally given a Nobel Prize, and she discovered what um, is known as the jumping gene, okay, a, a process of, of, of genetic replication, which when she did the research by herself without advanced technology and presented very thorough work to her colleagues, they laughed at her. And basically, this was before anybody knew about the structure of DNA and RNA, and um, which are the building blocks of, of, of uh, cells. The genetic system. Right, the genetic right. system. And um, eventually, when that was discovered, everyone went, aha, 
she was right 30 years ago, mm -hmm. okay? But she kept doing her work. So we named it after her because, and one of the ways that she discovered it without that technology was that she worked with corn and she knew every ear of corn intimately. And if there was one little bit of change, she would see it. And she would understand and it And she would understand it genetically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we named this after her because it embodies the kinds of values we think need to be done mm -hmm. in this kind of research. That is someone who is committed to the work that they do for the sake of the work that they do and not for some outside recognition and someone who will look at all of the different and diverse ways that AIDS manifests itself and understand it on that level instead of what happens now in the way research is done is that you, you deal with one group of people and particularly in this case it's been white men mm -hmm. and no matter who have been infected generally uh, uh, you know, uh, through homosexual sex, although no one knows exactly which way, even that. Um, and you don't let anyone else in. Mm -hmm. So then you only have part of the puzzle. And mm -hmm. things that come up in other groups aren't there. The McClintock Project, just briefly, is a separate research entity that's separated from the National Institutes of Health that nobody who works for it can get be earning money from any other source it takes away conflicts of interest it takes mm -hmm. away the profit motive mm -hmm. it's premised on being multidisciplinary and that all and and dealing with different hypotheses that come from uh, what's called alternative medicine as well as you know um, regular allopathic or traditional uh, american for profit medicine and um and that it must speak to the diversity of the ways that AIDS manifests mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is that if you brought all these people together to try to figure out what was going on, and they didn't have to make a profit, and they, and they didn't have to stick to one point of view, that you could actually figure out where to go from there. Mm -hmm. Linda, you've had experience with the pharmaceutical end of things, as it were. What's your view? Is, is, is the McClintock Project organized in the right way? Does it have the, the right force driving it? What do we need to overcome? Well, I think you need to overcome two things to be able to successfully move in a rapid fashion towards a cure. First of all, you have to take away the control over the research process from the pharmaceutical companies that stand to make a profit from what the fruits of those labors are. Mm -hmm. So, and, and this, as I understand, McClintock does that. Uh, the other thing is you have to make sure that this is not driven by huge medical center investigator priorities that pad overheads, that support hypotheses even when they're proven to be wrong. Mm -hmm. See, the way that research has always been structured in this country is that you ask a question and you try to get some money to try to answer that question, but the truth is you already know the answer to that question before you write the question to mm -hmm. try to get the money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that and, means a <laughs> successful project before you start it so that you'll get refunded for something else because exactly you've right. built a reputation. Exactly right. right. So you have to take it out of the hands of the profit-making drug companies and you have to take it out of the business of grant writing, research getting, supporting kinds of situations in, in major teaching institutions and put it in the hands of people who have nothing monetarily or professionally to gain as an individual from this process, mm -hmm. but that want to move collectively towards answering a question that we don't really know the mm -hmm. answer to right now. There still continues to be some controversy, as it were, over the cause of AIDS, and certainly, mm -hmm. as you pointed out before, the issue of, of how it's transmitted uh, from man to man, from man to woman, from woman to woman. Those are, are still, uh, we don't have an overall picture of, of exactly what that what that mechanism is yet at the same time we it's been focused at the national level and certainly with the clinton administration we've seen what some national aids groups have have called uh... a, a surprisingly high level of funding in this coming uh... fiscal year yet others have criticized the amount of money that congress will be appropriating perhaps as much as, as more than two and a half billion dollars as money alone won't do it commitment yeah. and leadership are, are other things that are important is there something to this question of, of, on the one hand, the politics among different disease-fighting groups, that is, those who care about research on cancer, arguing that too much money is going to AIDS or not enough is going to TB? Or, and is there something in, within the, the larger community that's focused on fighting AIDS mm -hmm. where, the, where divisiveness will, will, will detract from the effort? as you all have seen that in your various forms of participation. I saw an activist on TV the other day uh, discussing uh, uh, 
this d d divisiveness between uh, different, you know, cancer versus AIDS versus this, you know, and what she was questioning was how much did it cost to do the Vietnam War? What did we spend in Desert Storm? Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, in the in the Gulf thing. I mean, it's like when when we need money to scud million dollar missiles, somebody finds the money, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and uh, even if they're talking about this being, a, and I really am not that well, ver uh, a bonus year for AIDS money, you know, <laughs> if uh, the money is not being spent properly, and if there's no accountability to that money on any level, uh, it's it's really a waste, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we all f get out there and fight for more money, but then we we, we seem to lose you, uh, the the control over what's done with that money. Right. Is is the research being done mm -hmm. properly? Yeah. You know, what's what's happening with that money? Accountability in, in in the funding realm for research or for services is is another area where there's been some some controversy and some surprises. You were talking earlier, Maxine, about this interesting call from. Uh, the city of Chicago or Cook County about <laughs> funding. How, how, does, how does that go? Well, I think that one of the one of the issues is uh, I don't want to uh, you know start talking about specific places. I think that the issue is that there's money from Ryan White, for example, that in a lot of localities is not mm -hmm. being spent and. Part of that is the whole bureaucratic red tape, and part of it is quite deliberate. I mean, I will give you a better story than my Chicago story, which is that, you know, there's a whole focus now on AIDS prevention and education. Mm -hmm. We have never had an education program in this country. Never, never, never. Mm -hmm. We know how we can lower this epidemic, you know, the number of cases. Mm -hmm. There should be free condoms in every store in the United States of America. I mean, that, f just for beginners, mm -hmm. okay? There should be explicit sexually explicit and clean, you know, works for, for needle users, explicit education everywhere. We've been fighting the fundamentalist, moralistic right wing mm -hmm. on this who would, who would, don't care if lots of people die. But one of the things that happens, for instance, is that a state will get money for AIDS education and they will let it sit there and they will not use it because they do not even want to do something minimal. Forget explicit mm -hmm. safer sex education and there have been many states that at the end of a year, that money has just gone back into and the county. They, in this case, are maybe a handful of, of bureaucrats in the state education yeah, department that's right. or the like, or, or a health department, right. who don't see the need to, to take that money from the feds and have it distributed at the you local level. Or, but state. you can't even leave you it to them because mm -hmm. every senator, except for a couple, supported mm -hmm. Jesse Helms in an amendment years ago that said that you could not fund an AIDS program that quotes from his point of view promoted homosexuality, right. mm -hmm. you know, an education program, which all that that means is that it would teach gay men how to have safe sex. Right. Okay, so it's, we can't blame it on local, you know, everyone always wants to talk about local people and they're ignorant or it's just mm -hmm. the right wing. We ha have a, a, an entire Congress here that has been complicit Mm -hmm. in, you know, in supporting a right-wing agenda that is killing young people because they don't get a safer sex education in the schools, that, that will not allow needles and, 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 and condoms into prisons. You know, th there's a whole, you know, it's, it's, it's sort it's, of, it's, it's, it's criminal. It, it right. is totally genocidal and criminal just, that this yeah. is going on. Just to use yeah. an, one example of, of how... Of of throwing more money at a problem as opposed to seeing where to throw the money that you already have to make some kind of an impact. I mean, think about all those ads that you see on TV from the Centers for Disease Control that is supposed to be their prevention effort. Mm -hmm. That's a government agenda. That's not anything to do with the state level. And all they tell you is some touchy-feely message and call an 800 number if you want to find out more information. Mm -hmm. What's needed is, on television and everywhere, really someone staring you in the face and telling you exactly how you can keep yourself from becoming infected, mm -hmm. where we know those answers. Mm -hmm. And the other piece of that is to do the research into trying to find out, let's use gay men for an example, about certain sexual practices that you could really do that are probably safe. Mm -hmm. But instead of answering that question, there's a whole pervasive scare tactic to keep people from having sex anymore. Period. And, and so, so we get an ad that shows a man putting on his sock. Right. Mm -hmm. and, right. And you're supposed to figure out what that's about. I was trying to explain this to a German uh, AIDS housing colleague and he was 
I mean, it took me half an hour to explain to yeah. him that this was supposed to be a safe sex We, we, we yeah. were showing putting on a sock because we couldn't show putting on a right, condom. Right, putting right. on a condom. Mm -hmm. and, and, but it's, it's very, very depressing, but the, the pr basic problem that we're getting at is the same problem we had in 1990, in, in 1985, mm -hmm. in 1981, which is an utter lack of leadership across the board mm -hmm. from the local level to the White yes. House. Mm -hmm. You know, it ain't there. Mm -hmm. And there's nobody saying, no, you, no, this is, you, you can't do this. No, you can't, you can't restrict um, what people can say in education because that's going to kill people. You, no, you can't um, push this agenda mm -hmm. for your own for your own purposes and your own viewpoint because it's going to kill people and that the, the bottom line is saving people's lives and that's what has to happen. If we can just to sit back for a moment and, and think about the connection between the emergence of this disease in the United States, right. different than elsewhere in the world, right. among gay men. The fact that that's where it was noticed, that's where it was labeled, um, created a, a, a pattern of response in officialdom and certainly uh, among those who were um, not accepting, not tolerant of homosexuality. Do you think it would have been different in the United States uh, if it had emerged first among heterosexuals as it has elsewhere in the world? Or would we have run into the same problems mm -hmm. of, of profit-driven pharmaceutical research, of an unwillingness to, to open us up to discussions about sexual practices, whether they be gay or straight? Yeah. Well, it, it reminds you of, it, well, you know, that we're, it's always brought up the Legionnaire's disease thing, right. where it was a bunch of white guys. Right. I and mean, they, they right zoomed in on this. Uh, token, uh, they, when they had the, the token guys on the bridge who were mm -hmm. getting a little dizzy from something, mm -hmm. they zoomed in mm -hmm. on this issue. If it had come from, you know, a minority uh, drug using uh, uh, lower class right. in the United States, they probably wouldn't have done any more than they did with the gay white man. Oh, right. I don't think that it's specifically, right. they don't care if they get rid of every uh, mm -hmm. drug user either, mm -hmm. right. you know, and they're willing, you know, uh, uh, one of the major reasons that as a, a PWA, I stood up uh, and um, publicly spoke about this mm -hmm. was that um, I wanted people to know that it's, you know, I mean, uh, all classes of people can get this, all uh, races of people, you know, heterosexuals, homosexuals, white, black, Hispanic, it doesn't matter. And my, my, my thing was is that until the Jesse Helmses feel like, uh, like their sisters, mothers, and aunts can get it, <laughs> mm -hmm. right. and I could be right. any one of those people, Mm -hmm. that they're not going to worry about it. Mm -hmm. you know? But there's another thing about that, though. It's, it's uh, on, on, on one level, you know, I, I mean, I totally agree with what Tamar just said. But on another level, it, we don't have a cure for cancer, mm -hmm. okay? And it gets to a lot of people. And right. so there are two levels of this. I mean, one level mm -hmm. is that, you know, that, that people might have taken more seriously the prevention and education part of it and basic services and stuff like that. On the other hand, um, the pharmaceutical companies still rule when it comes to the way that research is done. And mm -hmm. when I was asked that question and someone said it, you know, as if there's a litany that activists use and say, well, if this had hit white people, you know, mm -hmm. we would have had a cure. I said, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. We would have been treated better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. But th it hasn't we done would, that. Right. We wouldn't have okay. run into the opposition, the about opposition about talking about it. But, but it wouldn't I do have made think a fundamental that difference. I also do think that the history, I mean, you know, just to clear up one of the other things that you said, I mean, the first cases amongst mm -hmm. women with AIDS were found in 1981. There was a paper published. Mm -hmm. No one paid any attention to it. And so when everyone says that the epidemic has spread, I say, no, you've looked beyond your nose. Mm -hmm. right. um, that, the, 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 the total outlines of the epidemic have been there, as we know, in our fight to change the Centers for Disease Control definition, 10 years of not paying any attention to the diseases that women were getting, okay, or uh, f former or present drug users were getting. You can make people disappear and appear when you want to. I mean, mm -hmm. even when it was obvious that there were a, a predominant of, of heterosexual sexual transmission cases in um, uh, Africa and Asia and other uh, third world countries, everyone sort of said, that's different there. And they mm -hmm. made up all kinds mm -hmm. of racist excuses mm -hmm. for why that was different there, mm -hmm. I might add. Mm -hmm. So 
people tried to keep this within a certain mm -hmm. realm so that they wouldn't have to uh, pay attention to what would be really needed. We, we've been talking about this in, in a kind of almost a, a detached sort of way, yet this is about people and their lives, about death, about each of you and what you've contributed in, 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 the, in the fight against AIDS. So I'd like to ask you just in the, really the couple of minutes remaining, if you just take a few seconds to give us your personal statement in terms of your reflection based on your work. If there's one message you wanted to leave everybody with, what would that be? Tomorrow, would you? Start? Well, I guess for myself, I... Um, you know, I, I don't see uh, uh, Maxine uh, kind of goes towards the, the technical aspect of mm -hmm. this and finding the cure and stuff like that. I'm, I deal more on a day-to-day on a -day basis with people with AIDS. Everyone in my life mm -hmm. is infected and mm -hmm. affected with AIDS. Um, so it, it's a kind of a, I mean, I listen in awe to what she has to say. I guess, you know, um, I would hope you know, and I, I feel even funny saying this, hope they find a cure. You know what I mean? I don't have great faith in that today. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't personally, you know. Um, and not for me, you know, maybe for someone else I hope. And I, you know, I hope they continue. I just, uh, I hope they find a cure, you know. And I understand. That's Rich, 30 um, seconds. I would, I would say don't get used to it. Because I think that's the mode that we're mm -hmm. moving into. Everybody's Perfect. like getting used to it. Oh, AIDS is here mm -hmm. to stay. It's we'll have to deal with it like cancer, yeah. mm -hmm. cancer or something. Don't get used to it. Mm -hmm. Don't accept it as status quo. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I would have to say that activism works. Mm -hmm. That in my six or seven years of doing AIDS activist work, I can list six or eight accomplishments that were a direct result of that work. Mm -hmm. And we need more people to be able to do that, just as Rich said, not to get used to it. Mm -hmm. But it works. Maxine? Yeah, um, I think it works. I'm not used to it at all, and, um, and I'm never going to get used to it. And uh, I don't know. I, I can't live without a vision, and I have a vision of a world without AIDS. If there's a message that I guess we want to leave everybody with after this discussion is that we all need to share in that vision of a world without AIDS, and we all have to find a way to contribute to the realization of that vision. Thanks for being with us on Metroview.